Hey everybody, what's up? This is the Getting Started Podcast. I'm your host, Sean Bustard. Today I have a very special guest, a uh, man who is my mentor, who is helping me do all kinds of awesome things and helping the whole team along right along with me. Um, you may know him from several different things, the Better Leads Box, uh, Fritz Advertising Agency, Holistic Freedom CBD, um, Sig Clevenger, everybody. How's everybody doing today? It's good to, it's good to be here. Thanks for, uh, thanks for inviting me, Sean. Hey, it's no problem, man. I've been wanting to get you on here for a while, ever since Trey hooked us up together. Um, so I'm just going to jump right into it, man. Uh, first, I would like to say congratulations on getting rid of skinny jeans. You never should have <laughs> had them in the first place, buddy. Yeah, man. You know, you move to a place like Dallas, Texas, and uh, skinny jeans just kind of – I still got one pair over there. It's a tough one for me to get rid of because it looks so good with my Jordans. But, um, <laughs> you know, uh, but, uh, but yeah, man, like – um, you know, I'm not really wearing them too much anymore. You know, it's kind of one of those things, you know, I kind of had to grow up, right? So, hey, I feel, man, I did the same thing. I used to be a big fan of the Jinko pants back in the day. Yeah. You know, you get a little older and it's like, hey, you know what? These, uh, these, these Wranglers and these Levi's look a little bit they better. They start to hurt, days. man. Like, they just start to hurt putting on. And, like, I'm lost weight, so it's not like I've gotten heavier. <laughs> it's just, like, walking around in those things and just, like, having denim touching every part of your body just – not 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 uh not fun anymore well and man you know you're from the south you're kind of like me there's something about us guys down here in the south we tend to grow hair on our legs quite a bit more than most people yes we do so, yes uh, we do <laughs> <laughs> but anyways um yeah. so man yeah like we talked about better leads box fritz yeah. advertising agency uh you're now cmo of the emails and surveys uh holistic freedom cbd six-figure influencer coaching program did I miss anything here, man? Man, we, you know, we do, we dab a little bit in real estate too, but you know, it's, it's one of those things, man, like, you know, when, when you're building, when, you, when you're building something, you know, one of the things that, you know, I know I've talked to you about and talked to some other people about, you know, is mainly just, you know, everything that we're doing though, all fits with the same highest intention and that, you know, Tiffany and I, um, you know, me, you know, uh, me, I mean, me speaking for me and, you know, Tiffany's talked about this as well. And you've been on the calls. Where, you know, again, you know, our businesses are nothing more than tools that we use to accomplish a higher intention, right? So, like, as you know, you know, and as your, your listeners should, 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 should attest to, is, you know, like, our lives are all for some intention, right? We're, we're living our lives to be X and whatever that X is, right? So, me, you know, who's had a suicidal past, um, you know, my thing is, is I want to help people not be suicidal. I want to, I, I want my legacy to look back and say, this guy, you know, helped with getting people not to pull the trigger, but not only did he help with them not pulling the trigger, he helped show them the light and get them into a successful life, whatever that might be. To some people that might be money to some people that might be, uh, becoming spiritual with their maker, but just living a, you know, a successful life. And I want to help a thousand people do that. So whether it's CBD, whether it's making Facebook ads, whether it's uh, teaching people how to make Facebook ads, whether it's teaching people how to influence online, whether, whatever it might be, um, whether it's sitting on a golf course with an eight-year-old kid who comes from the city, as I, you know, as I volunteer for the first tee that I've done when I did it in college very heavily, and being able to influence that kid not to get into drugs and on the street and to play golf. I mean, whatever it might be, it all goes toward that highest intention. And I think, like, you know, you got to view the world that way. Cool, man. Yeah, I'm right there with you, man. I'm I'm all for helping people stay away from the bad things in life. It is – I've been there in that suicidal position. I've been, you know, on the antidepressants and on the drugs, and it's it's much better to live an intensive life, intentional life of doing good and helping people and empowering people just to be their best selves versus, you know, just watching people struggle all the time and – Unfortunately, we live in a world where people do struggle all the time, and all we can do is do our part and hope that we can get through to them. And that's part of why I intend to do with this podcast is get through to people, let them know that, you know, no matter what they're facing, no matter how down in the dumps they are, how rock bottom they are, it's never too late to get started. Well, it's never too late to get started, and that's what I love about your podcast. That's why, you know, I wanted to be on here, Tiff wanted to be on here, you know, and because we've both been there. You know, I mean, <clears throat> you know, you – <coughs> excuse me you um you know you you talk about you know get, it's never too late to get started and you're right you know i mean you look at some people that got started with companies very late you know i know i know some 
you know, or people that came out of retirement, you know, because they had lived their legacy yet or whatever it might be, or maybe they took a little bit longer to get started. Not everybody, you know I mean? Like technically I really, you know, didn't really know what journey I was on until about three years ago, although I've been on a journey now for about 10 years. Um, you know, so, you know, there's never too late to start, you know, I technically didn't get started really until I consciously knew I was starting until I was 29. So, you know, it's not like you have to be a young gun to get started. And, um, you know, I came in to, a very, 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 very uh, hard market, as you might know, Sean, you know, with marketing and digital marketing and funnels and stuff oh, like yeah. that. So, you know, you, you, you get into that and, you know, it doesn't matter where you're from. You know, I'm not going to say it was easy. I'm not going to sit here and say no one ever hated on me. No one ever called me names. No one ever did anything. No one ever lied to me, cheated me or anything like that. At the same time, though, I wake up every morning, I open my eyes and I go to work. And, you know, that's kind of it sounds easy. But I'm telling you the mental, the mental challenge that you're going to gain. Like one thing, you know, you mentioned a word that, you know, Tiffany and I are very, very, very specific on. We don't say struggle. We don't say problems. We say challenges, you know, as a challenge, you know, this comes directly from uh, Richard Branson as a challenge or Sir Richard Branson as a challenge, you know, that's a challenge you're going to overcome, not a problem you face. So like, you know, it all goes to, I don't like the word goals. Uh, I don't look to hit a goal. I look to um, obliterate through a target. So like, again, I'm not looking to hit a goal and just get to that goal and stop. I'm looking to get to that goal and then go through that goal and get to a higher goal, higher destination, right? So I look at things like targets. You'll, you hear things like Brian Tracy, Grant Cardone, um, you know, NLP coaches like Tiffany, um, you know, uh, Tony Robbins, those types. They talk about targets and they talk about challenges. They talk about challenges. They don't talk about, you know, having problems and setting goals. And I think that that is um, you know, really powerful. Just, you know, words really do matter and having, using the right words in your life and reframing um, with using those words um, can really, really, really um, help, you know, really help someone who is looking to get started. It's just a matter of reframing thought of what it is. You know, it's not nervous. It's, it's, it's excited, you know, stuff like that. Yeah. And, you know, we've talked a little bit about that before you and me and uh, I've talked a little bit with Tiff about it. Yeah. It's hard to do. It's a very difficult thing to do. And you have to literally pay very close attention and catch yourself with those words. You know, uh, I know that I've started using the, instead of using the term goal, I've started using the word target after we had our little talk one day mm -hmm. and it does, it puts things in a different perspective. It really does. Mm -hmm. And until you start catching yourself doing that, you don't really understand. You really don't understand what we're talking about until you start implementing it yourself. You really don't. And, and I think that, you know, everybody's journey is different. <clears throat> you know I mean? I, I, and I'll be, you know, I'll admit this. I, was, I would always ask people, what's your journey like? like? Is it really like that? You know, like, and the thing was, is like, I could have asked everybody that was an entrepreneur what it was like. And I would have never, ever gotten the answer that I needed or wanted. Right. I had to figure it out on my own. And, um, <clears throat> you know, like the biggest, you know, the, the, the only thing you got to do is you got to make a decision. You got to make a choice, make a decision and then make, and then take action. And you hear that from everybody, you know, there's no secret sauce to this stuff. You got That is the number one advice everybody does tend to give is just do it. Just, just go out it. and do it. You're doing it. I mean, like, how did I do it? You know I mean? Like mine is a little bit more drastic. You don't have to like move states and all this stuff. But for me, I knew myself, I knew that if I didn't move, if I didn't, um, if I didn't move, if I didn't um, take myself out of, an environment where everything I knew was, you know, I mean, I grew up in Kentucky. I grew up near Louisville. I, I was 15 minutes from my parents. I could get wherever I needed to get to. I knew that if I stayed in Kentucky, that I would quit because back then everything that I did, I quit when it got hard. And I knew this was going to be hard. I had started companies in the past. I knew this was not going to be easy. And I knew that if I was going to restart my life with the recent ex-wife that I had, and the recent reputation that I had just gotten completely obliterated with, at least back then, I thought with my ex-partner with, you know, some issues that we had had in the company that I wasn't going to be able to do that. I'm a rep, you know, that I just wasn't going to be able to go off the ground. And I literally just, you know, it's easy to fall into that. Um, so I picked Dallas because Dallas was, um, you know, a very hot, very hot market. Still is. Dallas is a great place to start a business. I never even been to Texas, man. Never even flown over Texas at the time. <laughs> I drove here you know, in a black 2012 Honda Civic. I had two pairs of jeans, a couple pairs of shorts, some golf polos, a couple t-shirts that um, I was super excited about that I just bought from Startup Drugs. And um, 
And that was about it. Uh, and a TV, for whatever reason, I wouldn't get rid of my 43 inch TV. I still have it. I still have the same TV. Um, I don't blame you, man. In Florida, actually, this is the same TV I bought at Brands Mart in Florida. I still have it. We barely use it. Um, but, uh, but yeah, man, I just kind of drove down here. And ironically, I had a bottle of Hooker's bourbon in the front, front seat for me. And um, yeah, man, I just drove down here and um, moved in the first week. I just really uh, drove into Dallas. I, I didn't know anything. I remember, I think my first day, I drove down to Starbucks, and some a lot of people had talked about Uptown, and which is ironic because I lived here. But they had talked about this, you know, area of town called Uptown, and went down there, went to Starbucks, and just posting on social media about me moving, and like, no one knew. Like I didn't let many people know. So a lot of people that were at home, they're like, "What? Wait, 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 you just moved? Like you're in Dallas now?" And like, you know, I still have those. And like, you know, I didn't want to tell a lot of people because I just, I didn't want to. I knew I talked myself out of it. So again, like I, me personally, I knew myself. So I had to put myself in an environment where I knew that I couldn't back up. And for me, that was moving. And for some of you, some of you that are listening to this, that's you too. I'm not saying maybe moving to a different state that you've never been to. That was me. That's my choice. But maybe it's just getting out of the normal environment that you're, currently in allowing your brain to see and do things that it doesn't normally do on a daily basis that's going to make you think that's going to make you consciously or realize you know that you are doing something different and that's what people need they need that shift they need that shake they need that realization that they're not a robot they don't get up at 7 30 every morning go to work get there at nine you know and, and, and live life like a zombie you know you don't have to do that but at the same time, you know, you don't do it frivolously. You go out there, you make a plan, you attack your plan, and you execute. You know, building a business is not hard, man. It's all about, you know, um, proving a concept, optimizing on that concept, and expanding on that concept. That's all it is. And, you know, once you're able to do that, you know, many things can happen. A thought alone is worth billions of dollars. A thought, a single thought. That's all it is. A thought. What thoughts are your listeners having they need to take action on that can help the other people? Exactly, man. Uh, yeah. I mean, that's how some of the you know, biggest companies we have right now have gotten started. I know it wasn't too long ago I saw, a, I think it was a case study for Airbnb. Yeah. Literally four guys sitting in an apartment bored like, hey, let's, uh, let's just rent out one of our rooms here and to whoever. And they could just basically use it like a hotel. And now Airbnb is like the biggest hotel chain without ever actually owning yep. any hotels or any real There's a great estate. book on that, Sean. You should listen. You should, you should read. It's called The Airbnb Story. I might have to look into that then. Yeah, uh, Tiffany had a book on it. Uh, she had the book. I just went through it. She's told me more of the story than actually me reading it. But there's a book called The Airbnb Story, and it's how Airbnb got started. Like, it got started in San Francisco. Yeah, I knew that. Just a couple of guys <laughs> in an apartment. Yeah, Anyways, you know, uh, people they're like, well, what can? Yeah, it's an interesting story and, and and interesting challenges along the way. I mean, they faced a lot of challenge with it. I mean, think about that allowing some transient person who's traveling allowed into your house. I mean, like, oh yeah, <clears throat> yeah we're way past <laughs> the days of you know trusting to pitch up, pick up hitchhikers and things like that. So that's basically what. Well, even today, man. I mean, you know, we get uh, Tiffany and I. You know, when we travel, we like to Airbnb, and we get a lot of people that are like, "Don't tell people, don't tell our neighbors that you're Airbnb because people don't like it." Da, 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 da. So you know, there's still like a cultural shift that's happening but at the same time it doesn't mean there's anything wrong with it or anything like that you know it's, it's a great service really yeah i haven't used it myself yet but you know eventually i figure i'll probably end up doing something like that but anyways man let's get back on topic i want to hit the rewind button a little bit man Let, let's let's go back to sid's childhood man like yeah. you know did you uh <laughs> mean were your parents entrepreneurs did they do anything with marketing were they in the uh, same game any way shape or form um my dad, my dad's been in sales his entire life. I mean, you know, I mean, I, I'm a personal believer that everybody's uh, a salesperson. You know, you're selling ideas, you're selling, <clears throat> you're persuading people on which restaurant to go to, you know, for your wife not to yell at you or whatever it might be. You know, I mean, you're constantly selling your idea to somebody. It might not be in exchange for cash, but you're constantly selling or, 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 or getting someone to believe your idea, in my opinion. So all of us sell. Um, <clears throat> so I just kind of grew up. I grew up. Uh, extremely competitive. I hate to lose. I hate to lose. I, I was very big into sports. I played baseball and golf growing up. Um, and uh, my mom, she uh, just was an entrepreneur. It's, it's kind of crazy. My, my mom's side of the family with my um, aunts and my uncles, my two uncles, they're both entrepreneurs. We kind of have family business on that side. 
<clears throat> and then my aunt on that side, she's not. And then none of my people on my dad's side are. My dad's a very, very good. My dad's just a very good, charismatic guy that everybody likes. And I kind of just learned through the traits of being around my dad as a child, <clears throat> of just how he treated people, how he was around people. You know, and even to this day, me and J Tiffany joke, you know, like, you know, or I'll joke, you know, on stage or whatever when I'm talking. And I'll just be like, you know, a lot of people, um, they find us because of me. They stay because of Tiff, right? So, like, a lot of that, like, charismatic, like, you know, they find me. They want to be a part of whatever I or me or Tiff are, you know. But then at the same time, like, when they get in, you know, like, the softness and the amazingness of Tiff is what keeps them around, right? So, like, <clears throat> you know, that's kind of, that's kind of, um, um, you know, that's kind of my intake you know it's, it's just going out there and doing it you're gonna get said no i got said no to today who cares does that mean that you're a horrible person no but just go out there and do it you know marketing i just i had a, i had to thank for it i mean i was thinking about this the other day because i was writing some for my book and um you know when i was little you know i just when i would watch commercials and stuff like that i, I, I didn't really remember this until the other day and it crossed my mind when I, and um and i was like oh my gosh like i used to do this when i was little all the time sean i used to watch commercials and um and like critique them like at seven or eight years old and I didn't really know what that was but like marketing always made sense to me and I recognized that at a young age I understood that the right audience needed to see that you need to be in an environment of buyers you know basic stuff but I understood that at a very young age what are the things that you understand it doesn't have to be marketing for whatever reason I'm really good at golf I've been really good at golf since I was three years old I don't know why I was given that gift um, golf's a very difficult sport but the thing is is I'm able to influence people through golf I'm able to influence people to a lot of things you know you don't think there's anybody on the golf course i went on the golf course and influenced people and made sales i've done that all the time you know so there's a way that you what is what is the gift that you have i found people like this tattoo that i have man i don't know if you'll be able to see it on the podcast but the, we all win when we all win tattoo man this tattoo right here the guy by the ego gave me this tattoo and the reason he does tattoos is because he found that was his gift he told me the entire story it's like a four and a half hour session and we were sitting there and he was like, I do tattoos because tattoos is what I'm really good at and because it makes people happy. And he's able to influence people, his thoughts, his ideas through giving people tattoos because he's able to help people smile and give people happiness through being able to know how to tattoo. I don't know how to tattoo. Do you know how to tattoo, Sean? To tattoo. <laughs> no, right. I've got a few and I got a few buddies that can do it, but I <laughs> – Yeah. Me so, and drawing and art, not the yeah. best of friends. Me either. I don't know how to draw a stick figure about it ask Trey about my drawing skills but the thing is is again it doesn't have to be something it doesn't have to be marketing it doesn't have to be sales it, you don't have to be good at design you don't have to you know invent the next like rocket ship you can be the best person that makes bunk cake that anybody knows and your bunk cake once is wanted by everybody that knows you it comes to find out your grandmother who made the recipe Put a special recipe and nutmeg in it that no one else puts in bunk cake and that nutmeg makes your bunk cake different than anybody else's but to you it's what you've grown up with your entire life so you don't think it's anything special but it is it's special to somebody like it's like in relationships or like with tiffany me spending that five minutes with her you know or just supporting her going to her speaking engagements going and supporting her events to me that's what you're supposed to do you get that sean you're from the south that's what you're supposed to do mm -hmm. tiffany had never had anybody do that with her in the past ever so to me, it was normal. To her, it was the world. And once you can start to see the world like that, that you do have skills, you do have abilities that not everybody has, then take those abilities and figure out how to help other people with them. When you figure out how to help other people with those abilities, with those skills, to help them get or help them solve a challenge or a problem, whatever it might be, with that skill set that you have, all of a sudden you have a business. And then you scale and you expand on that business. That's all it is. Yeah. Oh, we're it doing. is. And, and you know, that, you know, doing the CBD business with you, you know, y'all have, y'all have already taught me more about it than I initially knew, even though I kind of had a little bit of a history with the industry in and of itself to a degree. Uh, maybe not necessarily always on the legal side, but you know, and it's just a matter of figuring it out. And then it's like, you know, like everybody says, taking action on it. Mm -hmm. doing it doing it don't think about it just just do it you get the feel you get the feeling you know and, and and you know that feeling that you get in your gut you ever heard sean people say your gut's always right and your head's always wrong or you know like it's yep. always you know you know your gut that that's your that's your subconscious mind 
before the gatekeeper steps in. Yeah. That, that's the emotion. That, that, and, and it's always right. Your subconscious is normally right. Your conscious mind is the logic. That's the, ah, well, can I, should I? Like, is it really something yeah, I should The call? rationalizing of the consequences now, and it? all that. That's the conscious mind stepping in. So, like, that's where that is. And understanding that when you have that feeling, so I'm like, I was in the same boat. Like, I knew about CBD. Yes, I used CBD. But this opportunity came. I don't, I don't want to say it fell in our lap. I mean, we, 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 we we went out there and made it happen, but you know, we, we had an opportunity come our way and we, and, and me and Tiffany made the decision within seconds and then we were all in. And then when we made that decision, I mean, it was all or nothing. There's no, you know, when you make that decision, you go. And I think like for me and Tiffany, it's just sort of calloused in our brains or calloused in our, in our being, you know, like, cause we've done it so many times now with every product, everything we've done in our life over the past three years. Um, but that's basically what you got to do. You got to make a decision. You got to go. Sean, I haven't sold a single thing. I haven't sold a penny of CBD yet. You know, in a year from now, we're going to listen back to this podcast and be like, holy crap, you know, but, but I haven't sold a penny <laughs> of CBD yet. You know, I, I, I got a great feeling, you know, everything's telling me it's going to work, but until we hit the ground, Sean, and we start selling product, I don't know if this is going to work. No, it may I don't not. Know we're going to make a cent. I, I have no guarantee that I can tell you, Sean, that you're going to make a penny with this. Like I can't do that because it's, you know, again, there's no guarantee in anything. You have to go out there and you have to make it happen. Now, if we do what we're supposed to do, Sean, I have a pretty sure idea. Pretty sure, I'm pretty confident, Sean, that you're going to gain back any money that you've invested in this, you know, a few hundred dollars that you've invested into this. But, you know, again, it's no guarantee. No, never a guarantee. Yeah. And you know, I think everybody's waiting on this, you know, get rich quick. This guarantee. I sign up for something and it's a guarantee. Now, I, because I signed up, because I spent the hour or whatever it was to sign up and do a little bit of work, I'm now just going to sit back and everything's going to come my way. That is not how this works. No, I, I, was, remember, I think I actually made a post about that uh, either yesterday or this morning, one of the two. When I first got into all this, I was blinded by a lot of the get rich quick. Yeah. And, and that's what a lot of people promise is, you know, do this and this, and you're going to make $5,000 or do this and yep. this, and you're going to make $10,000 and it's going to happen overnight. And I think it was Tiff actually that, I don't know if it was a post she made or a video I watched or something like that. All entrepreneurs and all business people and all startups do become an overnight success after yeah. they put the work in to get to that one night. Oh yeah. yeah you got to put in the work to get to that one night and then all of a sudden, yeah, you do blow up. Well, it's like, you know, I got a shirt, man. That's perfect for that. It, it, it's a square and on the blue, it says overnight success. And then below it, it says years in the making. And I wore that shirt last week on purpose. Um, you know, and I did a lot of video in it and it's all like way too big for me now. Cause I was like 50 something pounds heavier back then, you know, and all that, but I wore it and I showed it in the video and I was like, listen, you know, some people, they look at me or they might just have known me for a few months and they don't realize the years day in, day out. Like it's Sunday right now that we're filming this, you know, you get it, Sean, it's Sunday right now. It's 8 29 PM in Dallas. It's 9 29 PM where you're at. No, I'm still central time with you. Well, still central. Where you are. Okay. So it's 8 30 right now where we're at on a Sunday evening. A lot of people right now are, getting that final hour or two in of that weekend but we're sitting here and doing what we need to do to build the content to do the work you know to put in the hours that we got to know we need to put in to get to that goal i'm not sitting at home and twiddling my thumbs and making thousands of dollars a day um i'm busting my butt every day and doing what other people say they want to but don't do and that's the difference the self-discipline is the first thing you know i'm not going to get into religion like anything like that, but King Solomon, the richest man to ever live. There's a great book that you should read, Sean. It's called The Richest Man to Ever Live. And it was um, The Richest Man That Ever Lived. And that was, it's a book about King Solomon and the book of Proverbs and the Bible. I'm not going to get into religion. But what I am going to say is, is that, you know, uh, King Solomon was the richest man to ever live. He was the guy that invented trade. And it goes through him and he was literally like Jeff Bezos times a billion, right? I mean, the guy had everything you could ever think of. And then overnight, lost it all. 
So the thing is, is, you know, the higher the level, the higher the devil, but understand that, you know, when, you know, the first thing in that book that it says that you need to gain to gain all the riches and, and, and the success that you want is you have to be self-disciplined. When you tell yourself you're going to do something, you have to do it Yeah. because you're the one that's telling yourself in your brain. I'm not telling Tiffany every thought that I have or everything that I, you know, I mean, it's not like I run upstairs, Tiffany, 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 I just set this goal for myself. The thing is, is I have to wake up. I have to look at that whiteboard. I have to look at my to-do for that day, and I have to go get it done. And I'm the only one that truly knows if I did or I didn't, and if I did it at 100%. Yep. And you have to be willing to do exactly what you say you're going to do and exactly what you think in your brain. If you're not willing to do that, you're not going to go anywhere. It's true, yeah. man. It's absolutely true. And that's one thing I've had to not so much catch myself on, but to build more willpower into is – been you know for years i was big on yeah i need to do this this and this and i'd even make a list out man and then i just you know weeks go by and you're like okay well I, what the hell happened and just within probably the last last six months to a year i've really i've i've tried to catch myself on that more often and more often than not realize i'm getting the shit done and that that's yeah. that's really what it takes is you have to be disciplined you have to have that willpower and just do it <laughs> I mean, that, that's what it all boils down to. Just again, you do know, it. We're up right now, like, you know, um, Tiffany, I'm sure will tell you this, which will be a great thing on, on your show, but it's like, you know, the amount of hours, like if you were to count up, like how many people, you know, so she does this in her speech. She'll say how many people, you know, click snooze in the morning. And, you know, a lot of people are going to raise their hand. I mean, me and Tiffany do too. You know, I'm not, I'm not a morning person. I don't like getting up in the morning. It's like anybody else. I'm a night owl. That's a Southern uh, thing. Yeah. Um, but you know, Tiffany, we even, you know, raise her hand as well. Cause she does it. I mean, you know, we all do it. Thing is, if you take the average American and how many times they push new in a day, it's like something like you would lose like 20 something days throughout the year, or like seven or eight days throughout the year or something like that. I can so believe like, that. Pushing snooze. So like based on the average American and how long they push the snooze button. So, I mean, like, you know, that to me, that's like, that's big time. I mean, you know, and I'm not saying, I'm not sitting here saying I don't push the snooze button, but it's like little things like that, that really, you know, if you, you know, I remember hearing a motivational, I listen to a lot of Eric Thomas and I would say anybody that's listening to this podcast, that's looking to get started, like just Google Eric Thomas and YouTube. I mean, not Google, uh, go to YouTube, type in your Eric Thomas motivation and just start listening. And like, you want to start listening to a guy that gives you energy in the morning. You want to start listening to a guy that's going to get you off your butt and that's going to get you like just wanting to take over the world. Listen to Eric Thomas. Eric Thomas is going to put a fire up your butt that is going to make you just scream. You're gonna be, you know, it, 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 you realize, you know, through reading the book of David Goggins, I remember in the first chapter, the first freaking chapter, he smacks us across the head from a book by David Goggins, which I think you've heard of David Goggins. He wrote a book called mm -hmm. Can't Hurt Me. And in the first chapter, he talks about, I don't care how successful you are or unsuccessful you are. I can guarantee you one thing. You're not using 20, you're not doing 20% of what your total potential is in your life right now. And like that hit me like a freaking brick wall. Cause it really then made me think cause David Goggins, you know, David Goggins is like paraded around as the Navy SEAL. He's yeah. the Navy SEAL. He's the guy that you want. He's the embodiment of the perfect Navy SEAL. Right. So like, you know, I'm reading that and I'm just like, holy crap. And then you start to think and you're like, well, I'm really not getting up. I could get up a little bit early. I could stay up a little bit later. I could have gotten that done. If I'd done that that day, I could have done. It really makes you second guess, which really then makes you wonder like every day, am I doing every single thing every single day that I could do to further my cause? And like, you know, and that's kind of the thing, you know, it's true. All of us, you know, I'm sitting here again. It goes back to it's 830 at night. I could have easily said, you know what, Sean, I've been going at it since two o'clock today on a Sunday. And I didn't get to spend time with my wife and I haven't had a real chance to kind of relax this weekend. And I got a huge week because we're launching CBD this week. You know, maybe it's best if I just hop on this podcast interview in a couple of weeks when I got some time, I could have said that, but I didn't say that because if I do that, I'm procrastinating and I'm not doing what I said I was going to do. And I'm not being a good example for the people that I preach to every day. So again, you know, it goes back to, I'm sitting here, I'm doing the work and I'm putting in the hours, the time, whatever it is. And I'm developing and coming up with the content that needs to be heard to get the work done and to further the cause. And the reason me doing this podcast is going to lead to something. It might lead to sales and CBD. 
it might lead to sales in your CBD store, you know, which you got a great name, you know, like you got a great name with what you're doing with your CBD, you know, and I would highly suggest that you promote it on here. But it's just like, you know, again, you know, it, it's going to help someone stand down the line. And that's the point. us doing this is fathering a cause. It might not be directly with me, directly with you, but it might someone listening to this six months down the road, CBD, really? I use CBD. Maybe I can check them out. Oh, you know what? I really like Sean's podcast. Let me try some of his CBD. And then before you know it, this episode, this one we're shooting right here, six months down the line without either me and you knowing it, got us a CBD customer or help someone realize that, you know, they just got to burn the damn oats. You yeah. know, I mean, there's a great, there's a great quote from Tony Robbins. Where he says, you know, um, when people, when they're people, when human beings, when they're either going to die or succeed, tend to succeed. And if you think about that, that's true. How many close calls have you had in your life, Sean? Or how many times if I felt like my back was against the wall and I had a scratch claw and do anything I could just to survive? I mean, the day. That's why I'm sitting here today. I was splitting up ramen noodles, ramen noodles, you know, for my meal. You know, I'd oh, them. man. Let's not talk about ramen noodles. <laughs> oh, my God. All right, so I'd split up craft macaroni and cheese you know. <laughs> um, or the shells i go get the great value the shells because the mm -hmm. shells come with more cheese and it was cheesier so i like the shells <laughs> um but uh i'd go split those right so i'd split one one be lunch one be dinner. that's how i did it and you know like i remember even that day i mean like you know and i think when you, when you build that callus you know over the time you know, for me like i don't care I, i'd eat ramen noodles right now or i'd eat macaroni and cheese right now i think we got ramen noodles in the cupboard thank you you know, I always like the Oriental ones. The Oriental ones aren't half bad. But, um, but yeah, so, you know, I think, you know, I remember those times, man, and they weren't easy. I remember sitting at home and, like, thinking I'm doing all this work and not, nothing's showing for it. But you know what? You keep doing it and you keep doing it and you keep doing it. And all of a sudden, it's not just a simple, oh, look, I made a sale. A wave of good comes. And, and I've seen it too many times not to believe it. And the, be the best advice I've ever been given was by a mentor of mine named Brad Beard. Um, and Brad – told me he said you know all you focus on in life is you need to get up in the morning you need to focus on only being the best person you can be that day in every single task that you're doing you can't focus about yesterday you can't focus about tomorrow and it's hard i'm telling you it's it's not it's not the easiest thing in the world but you you you, you have to focus on it and i wake up every morning and i specifically focus on um the task that i do that day and what needs to get done and what I need to do to make sure that those tasks are taken care of to the best of my ability. And then I get up the next day and I do it. The thing is, is when you consciously do that, for whatever reason, every three, four, five days that you focus and you do that consistently, a new opportunity, a new door shows up or opens that you didn't think was even there. It becomes a huge opportunity. That's a big, a big reason why this whole CBD thing came about. You know? Yeah. And I think that's why y'all have had so much success with it, you know, with getting, you know, a, we're, you know, you're not going for the MLM route. You're not trying to recruit a whole bunch of people to sell just a mediocre, half-assed product. You know, you got, you, like you said, you said you want to start with, you know, five or six people, and all of a sudden you've got 50, you know, mm -hmm. that you're trying to get everything set up for and get the back end all ready to go. And you know, I'm more than fortunate enough and grateful to even be, you know, given this opportunity and – uh I can't wait to do it. I know you're excited for it. I know oh, yeah, Tiff and Trey are both excited for it. You know, this is going to be a great, I think it's going to be a great stepping stone for me. It'll be yeah. another great business for y'all. Um, it's going to be a great learning experience for you, man. And I would highly suggest, you know, I mean, anybody that wants to get into this, reach out to Sean, you know, I mean, like it's CBD is, it, it's the miracle plan. I mean, it really is. And, you know, and it's, it's, it's solving a lot of challenges in a lot of people's lives. My personal challenge, I have crazy anxiety. I've, ADD, ADHD, out of the womb, you know, and um, was given every medical prescription since I, you know, I've been taking pills since I can remember. CBD is the first time, like no joke, CBD is the first time that I've been able to wean off my medicine with doctor's approvals, okay, I'm not a doctor, um, but with doctor's approvals was able to wean off this medicine using an all-natural um, CBD supplement, which was amazing to me. I've, I've used, I've went in and had like doctors examine how to get me off this stuff and cbd the natural cure helped me get, get me off of it now again i'm not advising anybody that's listening to this show to do anything or that will have any reaction the way that i've had i consulted with my doctor and anybody that's you know taking any type of medication should discuss with their doctor first however it did work for me and it worked for me very well 
and it's the first time that I've ever been able to you know, take a little bit of medicine down, which is half of my normal dosage and take a chill pill twice a day, um, which is one of our products. And um, it, it, it literally not skip a beat. I didn't miss a beat. So it was really good. Good, man. I, I'm glad, glad for it. Um, do you want to get back to the topic? Because I, being from the South, man, we start talking, we get off topic. It happens. It's just a thing. For those of you listening, they're not from the South. Come to the South. Come to the South. It awesome. happens. <laughs> uh, yeah, before we know it, we're talking about belt buckles. Yeah, man, it'll happen. Yeah, belt buckles and cobbler. Never been a big cobbler fan, more of a pie guy. Uh, Apple pie, pecan pie? Pecan pie, dude. You're, you know, I tell you, the best of them all. Thanksgiving's coming up, man. Grandma's old school chest pie. Oh. Ain't nothing like it. Ain't nothing like yeah, it. I no, know no. It, it's diabetes with every bite, but, man, it's so worth it. <laughs> and we had this thing growing up called uh, – Chicken casserole, the only mm-hmm. thing in it that wasn't like lard or sour cream or uh, butter or Crisco was like three pieces of breast of chicken. And then we had like everything fat around it and yep. then some zest of crackers that were crunched up for a little bit of crunch. Yeah, that's the best part of it too, man. You get the crackers on there. Oh, it's no like- joke, bro. I'm talking like a 12, like a 12 by like a, you know, like normal size casserole dish, you know yep. what I'm talking about? Two sticks of butter in that sucker, brother. Oh, yeah. Woo! I know exactly what you mean, boy. It's whew. Man, and it Soul tastes food so its good. <laughs> yeah, man. But I think the biggest thing, you know, the biggest thing was I think people who are getting started. Self-discipline is huge. But it's, you know, don't overcomplicate it. Who cares about what your name is? You want to know what my name is? You want to know how many times I've changed my name, Sean? I'm in the process of changing it again right now. You know that? It's been my fourth no. name change in three years. My fourth. Mainly because of partners. You know, I've split with partners and stuff like that. But this is my fourth. I haven't missed a beat. I didn't lose sales because I changed names. They bought because of Sydney. They didn't buy it because it was Fritz or Funnels by Sierra or whatever it was. You know, it, it was, it was, they bought it because it was Sydney. That's why they bought it. There you go. That's not going to change in the future. Another thing. So don't get caught up in the deep. Don't get caught up in the details. You know, my, my uh, LLC is called Clevenger Enterprises. That's my last name. Clevenger Enterprises, um, that's my, um, you know, that's my, uh, that's my, you know, and it encompasses family businesses because we have a bunch of businesses now. So, I mean, that's why I did it that way. But I, I went and I did it online. It took me 10 minutes, you know, like, go and do it. Don't, don't sit here and say you're going to do it, you know, and just, I think just, you know, get one or two people in your ear that you're listening to. If it's Sean's podcast where it's me, Tiffany, and some of his friends that are entrepreneurs, listen to us. If it's Tony Robbins, if it's Grant Cardone, if it's, um, you know, whoever it is, you know, I mean, get a couple of people in your ear, listen to them consistently and follow what they tell you to do. Um, that was the biggest part three years ago. when I started on this specific journey, Sean was, I just got consistent with listening to a mentor and, um, I got obsessive with the mentor. I binged on the mentor and I just got to where I wanted to consume all the content that I could. And, um, you know, that, you know, and that's, you know, and now that just sort of trickles into everything we do today. Well, and I've talked about with several people before is what you put in becomes a reflection of what you put out. If you're sitting there listening to, you know, just I'm a fan of rock music, punk music. It's kind of what I grew up with. Uh, I was a big punk skater kid, did mm-hmm. that whole scene. And for years, that's why I saw this was punk music, punk music, punk music. And for years, I was a shithead little punk. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, did my own little, which I guess you would call it a walkabout, basically. Got my head on right. Started listening more to audiobooks, uh, podcasts, mentors. And even even I can see at this point in the game how it's changed from then till now. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people don't really think, you know, all right, well, I'm going to listen to this audiobook. Everything's going to change. And it doesn't happen with just one book. It doesn't happen with just because you listen to a one. couple of no, it don't happen with just a couple of podcasts. Action. Taking constant action is taking action all over the place and taking action all the time. Yeah. You know, like constant action is saying, hey, I'm going to read 10 pages of a book a day and doing it. Constant action is saying that I'm going to, you know, for a lot of people, like they think that they have this whole mantra of, oh, if I'm going to be successful, I have to get up at 6 a.m. or earlier. No. I'm going to tell you something really. I get up at 8 a.m. every day. I used to get up stupid early. I used to get up around 4.30. Um, yeah, that's me right now. I used to do that lifestyle. I hated it. I hated it every morning. I'm not going to lie to you and say I wasn't cussing up and down every single morning I was. Um, but I used, you know, I, um, I get up around 8. 
usually around eight o'clock. I'm usually fully working by around 10. So I do a lot of my morning visualization stuff. And I usually have my first call around 10 o'clock. Here's the thing though. I'm working usually until around 11 or 12. So just because I'm not getting started stupid early doesn't mean I'm not working stupid late. So I am a big believer in that. You don't have to, I mean, like, you know, you look at Jeff Bezos, he's, he's similar. You know, Jeff Bezos doesn't get started working until around 10 o'clock too, but he, he, he works late. Um, so it's just a matter of like, you know, I don't think you need to get caught up into like doing what everybody else is doing. You know, like you're not trying to be someone else. You're trying to be successful in who you are. So figure out what works for you and then you go after it, you know. Like Eric Thomas in one of his uh, motivational things, he says, you know, you know, you got to figure out whatever it is that you want. And then you got to spend every second of the rest of your life going after it. That's yeah. so true. You know, I mean, little things like, um, I mean, this is a bit off topic now, left field, but like, I'm going to tell you something where it meant a lot to me. Um, I'm not going to say that I condone anything that has to do with anything with OJ Simpson, but in the um, people versus OJ Simpson movie, there's a scene where um, Johnny Cochran or the person playing Johnny Cochran, which was one of his lawyers, went to OJ Simpson toward the end of the movie and OJ Simpson was down and out. And he was kind of losing it because, you know, he was getting ready to be like, uh, I guess like sentenced or whatever. And he was like starting to lose it mentally because he had been in jail now for about eight months and he was crying and something like that. And Johnny Cochran came to him and just basically said, listen, like, although, you know, like a specific time in football where like he like ended up like uh, beating a team or something like that, like this insignificant, like regular season game, but he made a comment and I'll never forget it for some reason. He said, ever since that game of you being a black man and you taking over in that game, you know, again, this has no racial anything, but just like me watching that game has made me literally like wake up every morning and chase after that feeling that you gave me in that game every single day. And he's like, you did that. And like, I don't know why that sticks out in my head, but it's just that whole thing of waking up every morning and going after it as hard as you can. Like, that's what we do. You know, yeah, I got a schedule, right? I and mean, I can sit here and I can, sh I don't know. I mean, I got CBD over the next couple of days, but I mean, like, you know, yeah, I mean, tomorrow I got a schedule, you know, I got three sales calls. I got, you know, a couple of podcast interviews. But the thing is, is I'm going to have stuff hit me tomorrow in the mouth that I wasn't expecting. And I got to be able to go out there and, 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 and deal with it and take care of it. That's going to happen. So for people that are getting started with this journey in their life, understand you're going to get hit in the mouth probably as soon you're going to get knocked down. The best quote that I've ever heard about, about getting knocked down or about failing at something is, is guess what? When you get knocked down, you better land on your back because when you can look up, you can get up. And that was said by a famous guy by the name of Les Brown. I've been knocked down thousands of times in my journey. I've had people purposely attack me. I've had people purposely just blatantly lie about me. I've had people lie about my family. I've had people tell me that, the niece that we that that my little sister adopted should have been adopted by a different family because we're a family of frauds and they don't even know anybody besides my influence i've had people literally come at me at every angle it's going to happen yeah but the best thing that i've ever learned when it comes to haters is that the only way to truly piss anybody off is to do something important so the more haters that you have the more important things you're doing yeah you you're absolutely right there man and uh i know it that the movie itself wasn't the uh, most um, important per se, or the most, I guess, influential. But that's another conversation. The, uh, <laughs> a different movie, different movie. Uh, it was one that I was thinking of, but just because you were talking about the haters, man. James Franco said in that movie they did uh, for Netflix or whatever it was, I forget the name of it. They hate us because they ain't us, man. Yeah, and it's true. It, they they really do, you know. You get haters because you're doing something that somebody else wishes they could do, but for whatever reason, they can't, or well, as not. I'm learning now, they won't. Yeah. You know, they, they say they want it, but most of the time, they just don't want it bad enough. And that's Maybe. the difference between you know, us and them is we want it. We want it bad enough that we're going to go out there and get it. Yeah, and I don't have any special one, you know. I mean, I, I was given every disadvantage there was. I know, you, you know you've had challenges that you're facing now too, Sean. I mean, it's not like – we woke up one morning, said we wanted to be entrepreneurs, and then, hey, hallelujah, we're making all this money living in, you know, high rises in downtown Dallas or whatever. I mean, you know, I mean, that's that's the thing, and you hit the nail on the head. I mean, you know, you, you have to put in – you just have to put in constant action. We have to continually go forth, and we have to just, you know, a lot of times – Be consistent, man. something that no one else does. Yeah, and just be consistent with it. Never stop. 
you know, never give up. Uh, Babe Ruth once said, and that's a, I keep it as a screensaver on my computer all the time so I can look at it every day. It's hard to beat somebody that never gives up. I have that quote somewhere on a meme. It's hard <laughs> to beat the person that never gives up. He said, yeah, the quote I think was, it's hard to beat the person that never gives up. And You know, that's the thing. Like, you know, if you keep coming at somebody, they're just, they're going to, they're going to will. Yeah. You know, I mean, we've seen it in sports how many times? Oh, God. How many times has the better person lost? Because they, that one person just never, ever let up. Yeah. They just yeah. never let it go. You know, like they're a bit nuts. I mean, like, and I hate to bring up a fictional movie, but you look at Rocky. Yeah. Rocky didn't beat, um, you know, Rocky didn't beat any of those fighters because he was the better fighter. Rocky beat those fighters because it was hard. Yeah. He kept, kept going, kept hitting. He, you know, I mean, he kept getting up. How can you beat someone in boxing that refuses to stay on the mat? Yeah. You know, Rocky beat, um, you know, uh, whatever his name was. Um, oh, crap. Apollo Creed. Not because he was a better boxer. Oh, I get it. This is a fictional movie. Okay, yeah. I get that. This was pre-scripted. I get it. But, again, I mean, you look at the Tyson, you know, what was it? Uh, Tyson and uh, Joe, who was it? Joe Lewis? Not Joe Lewis. But, you know, Tyson got in a couple of, there was a fight Tyson got in with um, Joe something. I can't remember his last name. He got in a fight with somebody. It was like a David versus Goliath. And Joe Frazier, was it? Man, was it Joe Frazier? But he beat Joe. Joe Frazier didn't beat him. Did he? Go for it. The person who was fighting him had a, had, had a mom who was dying. And he swore to his mom that he would beat Mike. He would knock Mike Tyson oh, yeah, out. No, I went for sure. And um, I forget who it was. And when he went in there, he went in there with vengeance. And he knocked Mike Tyson out and said to be the person that can never be knocked out. I mean, how many stories have we heard of, you know, 80, 80 pound moms lifting cars for their children? To get yeah. Like, you know, those things are true and those things happen. And you just have to get in your mind that it happens and you just have to get this, like, I hate to say it, but this, 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 this poor mindset out of your head. You have to get this, you know, this just poor person mindset out of your head of things happening to you instead of for you and, and opportunities that are just, you know, you don't see opportunities, you see barriers or you see challenges that, that are disguised as opportunity. You really got to edit and augment who's in your life and you, know, you got to take a step back and, and look at the people that are in your life. I mean, some of those people is going to be family, y'all. Like, I've had to kick out family, you know, that, 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 that don't believe in me or that don't see what I'm doing. You know, like, I've literally had to block people on Facebook. I have an aunt that I cannot, that, that I've literally just, this journey has made me realize that I can't stand her and that she's just a negative person. I've literally cut her out of my entire life. She goes to family functions, you know what I mean? Like, I, I went to uh, my, my grandmother's funeral, you know, three or four months ago. And she was there and I just, you know, and she's cut out of my life. She's there. I'm cordial. She's cut out of my life, you know, and that's going to happen to some of your viewers. It is that serious. Yeah. Because you have a family and I'm, you know, my, my mother, I was lucky. I got a mother and father that love me. They don't understand me half the time. They don't understand what I'm going on in my journey. They don't get it. They're not supposed to get it. They're not supposed to give me validation. I'm supposed to give my own, myself my own validation, right? So, you know, that's that's the thing. Just know it's going to happen, but anybody can get through it. I mean, I'm, you know, we, me and you seeing yourself go through it, Sean. We see Trey go through it. He's 20, you know, 22 years old. You know, this kid who came from a horrible background, horrible background. There's no reason, rhyme or reason in the world. This guy lives in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. You know, I mean, does, barely has even Wi-Fi at his place. And this kid's making it happen day in and day out. He's about to move to Dallas in his own place and just in taking constant action over a course of six months. And he gets yeah. about to live a dream that people only, that kids his age only dream of or have moms that have big pockets. Yeah. He's about to do it on his own and prove to the world that he can stand up on his own. And it doesn't matter what his past is. And that's the truth. It is the truth, man. It doesn't matter what you've done. You've been in jail. Cool. I, I just paid someone, one of my coaches, I just paid $2,500. Normally charges $5,000. Named Zachary Babcock. He's a podcasting coach. I just paid him $2,500, which many people have paid him five and $10,000 to work with him. The guy's been out of jail now for barely over a year. I think. Not long. I don't care. It doesn't matter. So what? You've been in jail. I can care less as a customer you've been in jail. Can you help me with my challenge? Yeah. That's all I can 
Exactly. Help each other, help everybody out. Is that that's what it's all about? Is if you can help somebody, I don't care. Morally, I do draw a line somewhere, but going to jail, not a big deal. Um, no, I mean, like, if you're beating children, obviously. You yeah, know, there's, you, yeah, like there's me, a moral line Domestic there. violence, I, I'm, I'm not big on I don't like, you know, I mean, obviously. But, you know, like, I have moral values. But, you know, but, yeah, I mean, you went to jail, you went to jail. So you made a mistake years ago. Yeah, shit happens. Who cares? You want to know something, audience? I should have been to jail. I should have went to jail a few times. I did to be honest, I should have went to jail for being drunk on the sidewalk or I think I was found at the gas station once, like <laughs> on the concrete. Um, you know, in, in college. I mean, you know, all of us did stupid stuff in college, you know. What I mean, oh, like I've never done any I've never stolen, I've never cheated anybody, I've never done anything like that. You know, I've never done any white collar crimes, I've never scammed anybody or anything like that. The thing is though, is you know, I mean, I've done stuff that's broken the law, to quote unquote, that technically I should have went to jail for. The thing is, you got caught, I didn't. Exactly. Who that's cares? the difference. Who cares? You know, I mean, as long as obviously you have, you know, I mean, you know, just be a good person. That's like the biggest thing in this world that I think just is so simple. Just wake up and be a good person. Like try to help a person, one person a day. And you can do that by simply smiling and nodding. Like, you know, I mean, there's a whole chapter in my favorite book on how to win friends and influence people by Doug Carnegie on smiling and the effect of smiling to people that you, that um, throughout the day. And, you know, you read that book and I just remember like reading it and if you overly smile, like if I wake up and I'm just smiling everywhere, it's really hard for people to be upset around. Matt, speaking of that book, I want to give you a little bit of a tip. I don't know how many times you've read through it. I, I haven't actually read it. I've listened to the audio. Uh, for whatever reason, I have a hard time reading the book without falling asleep. I book too. Yeah, I've read that one. Though. But when you have kids, <laughs> read it or listen to it again and see, like, there are certain parts of it that you kind of take for granted at you know as you first go through it the first time or two when you don't have kids. Having have my having my own kids and going through it and listening to it again there's several areas that really struck me as very powerful that I didn't even think about before. So just yeah. remember that when you had your first kids and yeah, let me know about that. That's uh, a book. I think, you know, I mean, I, I'm not big on telling people what books to read or whatever, but I mean, like if there was a book that I would like blanket as being as wide as possible. And there's not many books that were written in the thirties um, that are as, as that are said still hold their value like that. Still hold the value, but just beyond that, I mean, it's, you can read that book as if it was written in a, in a, in the, in the new edition yesterday, with the same principles, you know, it's thinking you're rich is the same thing. Um, there's a couple of books out there like that. If I was to name top three, probably like that off the top of my head, I would say thinking you're rich, how to win friends and influence people and the richest man in Babylon. All three of those are written about ancient times and those values so true to today. The richest man in Babylon is, is such a good book. It's short. It's only like 98 pages. But it's basically about like back in the olden days, you know, Babylon, all the people were always rich. And they didn't know why. And it goes over like five basic principles of how to continually have money flowing in. And the thing is, it goes over like, you know, don't don't get yourself and don't invest in fools, only invest in people. I mean, it's basic stuff. But when you take a step back and you look at your life, you're going to realize that sub, you know, subconsciously you're doing this stuff without even knowing it. So when you take a step back and you just look at the basics of things, when you look at what you're doing, you realize the mistakes that you're making and then you just got to make the shift and you got to make the change and then you got to execute on it. Really all it is. Those are probably the best three books that I would say that are old that are still holding the value best, thinking you're rich, how to, how to win friends and influence people and the richest man in Babylon by far. Well, I definitely have to check out the other two. I think Trey has kind of mentioned the Think and Grow Rich one before, but I haven't gotten around to it. I have Think and Grow Rich and Audible. You can also go and get Think and Grow Rich and the Richest Man in Babylon on YouTube. You can just Google the audio. Okay. All right, well, man, we're starting to run out of time here, but I do want to get this last little bit in. We've talked, we've been all over the board. We've talked about all kinds <laughs> of stuff. That's what these um, shows are for, man. I know, man. They're great. They're absolutely great. And like I said, my goal is I want to get, I want to get to your origin stories. I want to know what, you know, drives you guys. What make, what gets everybody started? What is it that is that mm -hmm. big fucking push that just says, I've got to break free of the normal everyday slave life. So my last question here, man, mm -hmm. what is the best piece of advice you can offer for those out there who are skeptical about the whole lifestyle, but they know their current lifestyle isn't working anymore. What 
value could you impart on someone who's in a situation where they work all week just to make ends meet, have no idea where to begin or how to break free of the typical slave life, and what is the first thing that they need to do? So you're asking what's the first thing they need? They want to get out of it. They want to be an entrepreneur. What's the first thing they need to do to get out of the nine to five? Is that genuinely what you're asking? I just want to make sure I understand. What is the first thing they need to do? And then what is the best piece of advice you can offer to someone who has taken that, who is ready to take that first step and who has taken that first step? Okay. Okay. So the first thing they need to do, man, is simple. They need to take action. They just need to go. They don't need to think. They don't need to research. They don't need it. They need to go. They need to go get it. They need to go to GoDaddy. They need to register it on my name. They need to, you know, um, you know, register it on my name. They need to go build a Facebook page and they need to start telling people about whatever it is that they're doing. They just need to go. They don't need to worry about advertising. They don't need to worry about marketing. They need to see to go and they need to tell everybody it is what they're doing. And they can do that. You know, you can go get a free MailChimp account. You can go get, you know, um, you know, free MailChimp account. You can build, you know, Wix. You can go to Wix and build a website if you want. You can, you know, go, uh, uh, you know, doing, getting a go domain name is 11 bucks. You know I mean? You can go do that stuff for stupidly cheap. And then you just need to go out there and you just need to go and you need to start talking about it. Just talking about it. Just talking about it. Talk about it on social media. Talk about it when you're getting your hair done. Talk about it when you're at dinner. Talk about it with your wife. Just talk about it. And I'll give you, Sean, a, um, an article that got published in Addicted to Success that I wrote um, that um, talks about how to strike up conversations with strangers. It's super simple. Um, and you can just give it to your, uh, give it to your audience to, to, to read. And it's super simple. You know, I mean, how to strike up a conversation with strangers. It's really not hard. And speaking of the books we just wrote about, there's a lot of uh, value. There's a lot of um, content in those books that discusses why this works and um and, and um it's it's on addicted to success i was published about three and a half weeks ago and i'll grab that link sean and i'll shoot that over to you um so you can have it and you can put it in your show episode and people can read that but um but that would be the first thing they need to do um and in regards to the best advice i would give them i would say surrendering you know surrendering to the process and, you know, literally just letting yourself and your mind and your body go limp to what happens. Don't allow yourself to get so tensed up and so worried and think about starting this, you know, thing. You need to go out there. You need to just start. You don't want to just quit. Your, you know, don't quit your job. Don't do anything. Go out there. Start. Get it up to where you're making as much money as you are at your job. Right? I mean, that's pretty much what I did. Get up there to where I was, you know, at the time I was running another company and I was making a few thousand dollars. And then, you know, one day I made 21 grand. And I was like, okay, time to switch. So like, that was literally what I did. And, you know, don't, don't do anything to where you're going to put yourself in financial strain. So you're going to have to put in the late hours. You're going to have to go home and, you know, and work that eight hours or that six hours you got to do on your job. But look, you know, you got to surrender to the process. You got to let the process happen. Understand that things are going to come up that are going to be completely 100% out of your control. But what I tell Trey, what I told you, Sean, head down, eyes forward, focus on the mission, don't focus on the prize. Focus on helping people or doing what it is that you love doing. Focus on what it is that you got into. Don't get into something to make money. Get into something because you're good at it and because you enjoy doing it. The rest always takes care of itself. Good deal, man. Good deal. It's great advice. And uh, Sid, man, thanks for being here, man. It, thanks, man. Thanks for sitting down with me. Thanks man. for everything you've done for me and everything you're doing for me. And, you know, like I said, I'm grateful to be working with you. And I'm grateful to keep working with you in the future. I look forward to every future endeavor that we have. A um, couple last minute plugs, guys. Everyone that's listening, man, go out there, check out the Better Leads box, check out the Fritz Advertising Agency, or I believe it's being rebranded to the Better Leads Agency. Um, Holistic Freedom CBD, your natural remedy CBD. Um, guys, Facebook, Facebook, Sid Clevenger. <laughs> that's me. I promise you. You will not regret it. I appreciate that, man. And I'm just really happy to see all the growth that you've seen. And you take a lot of action, man. And, you know, like Tiffany and I told you at the beginning, and, you know, we, we, we tell everybody that, that that's on this journey with us. I mean, like, we just look for good people. Just, you know, focus on surrounding yourself and putting yourself around good people, um, people that, that push you, people that do the work, people that, you know, that, um, you know, people that, that solidify who you are. Put yourself around your tribe. Build your tribe of people. Build your group of people that are you. And um, be relentless at loving that tribe every single day and giving your tribe that all. 
And um, we all win, we all win, y'all. Find someone to help win today, and I promise you'll win as well. And, Sean, I really appreciate you allowing me to be on the podcast. It was all fun. Thanks, man. I'm glad you were here. It's been a pleasure to sit down with you, man. Absolutely, brother. Take it easy, man. Have a good night. And I will – I think I will see you again Tuesday. Yeah. Wednesday. Hey, Wednesday. No, hold on. Are you – did you stop the recording?